So do you play as a robot or is someone trying to stop the robot? You play as the robot. <sighs> oh, so you're going to be the anti-hero. Mm -hmm. Nice. Before... Oh, I love the little tanks. I'm sorry. They're really cute. Before the Joker, this was the original anti-hero. <laughs> Live from Austin, Texas, with 37 reasons why you don't need to buy a new one. Number 17 will shock you. It's Retro Pals with Danny and Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Danny. Doctors everywhere say throw out this console now. <laughs> Doctors hate it. <laughs> what don't they want you to know? <laughs> they, they're just doing it for our health. Oh, oh hello, man. everybody. This stream has been a long time coming. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, we featured this uh, one time before, several years ago, in the distant past. If you thought you saw us play Nuon games before, no, your mind is not playing tricks on you. Mm -hmm. This is a redux, this is a redo. We are going to show it off to its fullest potential and then completely get rid of everything that has to do with this console. Because <laughs> I'm sick of it taking up space. <laughs> redux! Does that mean we have multiple ducks now? Yeah, mini ducks. We're cloning yes. ducks here. All right, real quick, got a bunch of folks to thank. Thank you to Comic Chameleon 25 Month Reset. Comma says, we wish you Merry Christmas. And a happy new on year. Thank you, Anari <laughs> Fox, 27 month resub, says happy holidays, time to rock that new one. We will. We will rock our world I am and rock going, that new one. I am one. going to rock that, and thank you. Thank you to Joel Cool Joe Cool Maverick uh, for a whole ass year, thank you, of subbing. They say, hey everyone, Merry Christmas and yay, here's to 12 more months. Yeah. Has it really been a year? Thank you. Also with the year sub is Yaddle, my favorite Star Wars character. They say happy new on year. So. Happy new on year to you too, and thank you for the year. And thank you to Seraphis Kane, who resubs and says, so here's what I have to admit that all week I've been mixing up new on, but hold on, that uh, Zebo, and uh, now I'm disappointed we won't be seeing that. Sorry. Zebo stream is still upcoming. Thank you. And thank you to uh, Loveless <laughs> for the 22 month uh, resub who says, Happy Crimbus, pals. Happy Crimbus to happy you. Crimbus, to happy Crimbus. Happy Festivus. Happy Christmas Eve Eve. Happy everything i'm it turns out uh, i want to do something a little special this year i understand this year has been a little rough for some all of us so i decided <laughs> is it good for you so i decided to be nice and i got you that new next generation console you've been asking for i let you open your presents early it's not even christmas eve it's the day before but i can't wait i'm just so excited mm -hmm. here it is wow <laughs> uh how about that photo alex oh that too there we go. <laughs> the new one. You'll notice uh, one piece of the puzzle here is entirely new. That's the controller. Yeah. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, we posted this to promote this stream on Twitter earlier, and no one picked up on the secret message in this image. If you looked in the upper left corner there, you might see a little bit of a logo that looks a little bit familiar. Mm -hmm. That's a second new one. I had to buy two Nuons to make this stream possible because the first one fucking died. It was not up to the challenge. I finally got that controller after so many years of searching, powered on the Nuon. Uh, here's a good story. So <laughs> This is my favorite story. I'm, I'm going to so zoom in even more so you can really see that Nuon. So the Nuon, when you power it up, it has a little LED display and it says, Hello! That's a really nice little feature. It, it greets you and then it's like loading disk or open or close. It tells you the status of the uh, the system. I plug this thing in after getting the controller, plug in this very expensive, very sought after controller into the system, turn it on, and it scrolls by, hello! And I'm like, oh, nice to see you too, Nuon. It waits a beat, and then it scrolls by, goodbye. <laughs> and then it powers off, and then never powers on again. And that's the story of how the first Nuon died. Thanks, first Nuon. Thanks for fucking nothing. So, I'm one. Sorry, that's my favorite story. You. That's, that's a funniest way any system, we have had so many systems die on us and as you all know it's always been very funny but none of it has been as 
funny is that? I'm sorry. So one emergency FedEx shipment from eBay later. I now have a second working new on for now. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work over the next two hours. I've tested out most of the games for it. And tonight we are going to showcase it in a way we didn't before. That first new on you see up there, the dead one, the shitty one. <laughs> the one in the corner. Uh, before, that was just barely a showcase. It was, we were using the old Elgato, so it wasn't even 60 frames per second. Ooh. We were using AV cables. Now we're in component video. We're getting maximum quality with the best input possible. This is the Nuon at its best. And I hope you're ready for it. Real quick, thank you to Kaibi <laughs> Torori, who says, Nuon, Nuon. Yep, we got two of those little fuck. Fuckers, sorry. Two of those little fuck fuckers. <laughs> they are fuck fuckers. What model so, is the dead one? Same as the alive one. The N501. They're both Samsung N501s. Mm -hmm. So what took us so long to bring the Nuon back to the, the stage of history, as they say? Well, it turns out the controllers got extremely rare in the interim between when we last streamed the console and when we want to stream it now. How rare, you may ask? That's for an empty box. Right now on eBay, that auction is live. If you want to buy an empty box for a Nuon controller, that'll run you 150 bucks. <laughs> they also have actual controllers, one for 500 and one for 750 with shipping from Germany. So good luck to you if you decide to go that route. So I want you to know that Danny consults with me before big game purchases because, you know, we're married and all. Uh -huh. And um... <laughs> Yeah, I kind of told you this one after the fact, but... Uh, the, the, the story is, uh, someone got tired of hoarding all their Nuon controllers, and they put all of them up on eBay in bulk for $200 each. Yeah. And that's how I ended up with a brand new in-box Nuon controller from someone who just decided to get out of the business. Yeah, this is one of those times where when he, usually when he shows me this, because I've, I've seen the empty controller box, and I was like, and Danny was like, hey, should I buy this? I was like, no, if you buy that, I will, we are divorced. And when he showed, <laughs> but it, when he showed me the Nuon, like, in the, the Nuon controller in the box, I was like, I had to, I was like... No, make this purchase. Also, thank you so very much to Rerez TV for the subscription. Do appreciate that. Holy crap, Rerez himself, yeah. the Nuon expert. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh If boy. you want a Nuon primer, feel free to head on over to YouTube. Uh, the first videos you search with Nuon in the title are guaranteed to be Rerez's. Thank you for that. <laughs> yes, thank you. And uh, please correct us if, I, if we mess up. <laughs> but what is the Nuon? What's, uh, what is this thing? The what system? This fantastic piece of technology? Well, I think I'll let the system speak for itself. Dear God, please work. This mostly worked when I tried it earlier. <laughs> I love that box, by the way. You showed me the box before you... I remember you told me about the box before you were like, so this is what it's like with the, just the box, but uh -huh. here's what I'm selling it for. Here's what we can, <laughs> we're buying it for, Alex. In communication studies, we call that the door in the face technique. It was. It worked, because you were right. That was a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start out with a Nuon sampler disc. Of course, it didn't pick up on the fact that it has Nuon enhanced features, but hey, I planned for that. That's what I actually wanted, you jerk of a system. <laughs> this should begin with a shortish trailer, which should get you up to speed on what the Nuon is. Cool. And after that, we're going to showcase six games and then a little bit of two games which aren't exactly playable. You'll see. Oh, you think the Nuon logo is bad? You should see the horrible magnetic Nuon statue we have. The oh worst my god, I forgot about that. I know, me too. It's the worst object imaginable. Nuon transforms any television into a studio or interactive entertainment center. Are you getting a audio? Nuon enhanced DVD player is performance charged, providing new yes. and improved features that make the movie viewing experience Movie viewing experience more exciting and engaging. Nice. Look at this. Graphic interfaces make it cool skull. To use. You could find skulls a on the new one. Enhanced oh, DVD man. player unlocks a variety of DVD bonus features currently available only on PCs with DVD ROM drives. Surf and protect. <laughs> with new one, music comes to life. Drop in a CD and see the music. Oh, there's the some pretty intense color cycling here. So if you're sensitive to light, please look away. Okay. Visualizer designed by Jeff Minter himself. Yeah, this is the intense part. Oh, jeez. I told you not to look. I'm not looking, okay. Who would have thought that it would have been a great idea to plug a phonograph into a TV? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Into the realm of the visual. And the fun doesn't stop there. 
the best software makers from around the world recognize the limitless possibilities of an advanced game platform capable of sophisticated graphics and incredible special effects. Add internet connectivity and a diverse collection of add-on peripherals, and the new unenhanced DVD player transcends the role of just a movie player and becomes a total interactive entertainment system for the whole family. Transcends the shit out of movies. Nuon, it's not just a DVD player, it's also a game system. What do you think? I think it's cool. Uh, what was <laughs> up with, like, half of that? The next Tetris, what the fuck? Um... Did you not know about this? Well, here's the thing. I tested this disc out earlier, and it locked access to this. Oh. I may not get a second chance at this, so let's try it. Wait, 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 hold on! Let me update! It's probably not gonna work. Okay, there you go. Okay. It wasn't detecting the, uh, the Nuon enhancements. Damn, I had to at least try it. Okay. But there is one more video on this disc that I want you to see. Okay. Sorry, I saw the brass ring and I had to reach up for it. <laughs> and you fell on your face. Yep. Cool. Live and learn. I love that song. Live and learn. So what did we learn from that intro? Uh, I, I learned that, that it has an incredibly involved menu system, almost obnoxiously so. Mm -hmm. And that there's a lot of different options there that, in, that, that it adds to the DVD menus that are like, wow, I can go. It, it's very advanced, <laughs> I guess, if in the early days of DVD. It, it feels like... It feels like an enhancement of what people wanted from laser disc systems, like big big time nerds wanted from. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to the next Tetris thing later, but uh, suffice to say, I've had issues trying to get that game to run, <laughs> and that's the first time this player has acknowledged the existence of the next Tetris on this disc. <laughs> ah, hell, we got some load time here. This disc you can only get by sending in a registration card for a specific Toshiba brand of Nuon console. Uh, that happens to have a full version of the next Tetri Tetris on the disc, and that's the only way you can play it. It was never released separately. So for... Are you kidding me? Why are you doing this? So for a period <laughs> of a, a couple months, while the Nuon was still irrelevant, you could uh, mail in that offer and maybe get that disc. And maybe, just maybe, it might run on your Nuon. Thank you, thank you Truffle Luxury, for the 18-month resub. Troff says all I want for Xmas is gay rats me. Too, you got it. There better be some gay rats under that tree, or Santa can just go home. <laughs> a tip number three to load this disc. There is one extremely precious video on this disc that I super, super want to show off. Okay. I'll only be a little disappointed if it doesn't, because this disc is extremely flaky. If you want to download Nuon games of your own, you can do that through the Internet Archive. Feel free to do it. Mm -hmm. It's all in one big bundle. I got stop all you. the games, well, except for one of them. Why don't you talk, do you have a, you want to, you're going to talk, uh, chat's asking about who VM is, VM labs are. Will we be getting into that? Yes. Okay, cool. We'll get to that. Shifting gears once again, here's tonight's first game. Oh, okay. Cool. Ballistic. <laughs> Speaking of ballistic. It's okay. I remember at the time, I think before the stream started, we said that anything and anything will go, everything and anything will go wrong with the stream. Well... We appreciate your patience, and thank you to the... Is that a snowman bouncer? It looks like a carrot's coming out of its mouth. I don't like it. Okay, sorry, this is sorry an, for, for... This is an actual like, retail DVD, so this one is actually going to work. Okay. And this is one that Alex is going to play for a few minutes. Oh, Here you go. shit, me. Oh, it's the... Oh, yeah, this is out of our family budget. I should... Mm -hmm. I should. Please enjoy the Nuon controller. You are one of the few privileged people to oh, experience it it's... firsthand. It's. <clears throat> it feels like it's going to break. <laughs> <laughs> it's very brittle. It's very uh, not well made. Kind of cheap, which is why it's going directly on eBay after the stream. I'm afraid to touch it. I'm getting my nasty hands on it. Should I be wearing gloves? Oh yeah, maybe. Ah oh, crap. Well, this game is brought to us courtesy oh, of Infogrames. Inter they know entertainment. Infogrames. So, did they get the official license for Mitchell for this? Mitchell! Oh, well then, there we go! I'm the fucking lie! I, I was trying to be snarky, and they actually did it. Mm -hmm. More than uh, PopCap and Zuma did. Throwing some shade at PopCap? Yeah. Yes! Fuck those guys. <laughs> I'm actually mad that they ripped off Mitchell, because this is one of my favorite games. Yeah, that does kind of suck. 
And but this yes, is officially exactly. licensed. Oh, sorry. I was Please gonna... go ahead. <laughs> my, just... my, my, my. Yes, that's Mitchell. why I love Mitchell the Company, because they make one of my favorite games, and it's one of my favorite movies. All right, hit that start button, and you can start Panic Lord. Mode, which the back of the box claims con confronts you with an endless series of balls. So have fun with that. All right. I love when there's an endless series of balls. Okay. Audio good? Uh, yeah, it looks good to me. Okay, just beware that the uh, explosion sounds may overwhelm. Let me just make one more joke. Okay, so while Alex plays, right. there we go. I will regale you with some Nuon history, courtesy of NuonDome.com, the only place where you can find Nuon information on the internet outside of YouTube. The Nuon is not a gaming platform. Instead, it's an embedded technology for DVD players. Uh, essentially, it's a cheaper, more efficient way of playing DVDs, and as a bonus, it plays its own compatible video games. This thing has a 128-bit media processor. Uh, officially, according to VM Labs official estimations, the power of this system can operate between 500 and 1000 megahertz on a contemporary Pentium 2. So that's, that's pretty good, circa 2000 when this came out. The Nuon also had the potential to support many other TV applications, such as web browsing, email, and video telephony. Oh. You do much telephony, Alex? Uh, I'm not psychic, so no. <laughs> VM Labs' business plan, I'm quoting here, is to develop the Nuon interactive platform technology to broadly license this technology to semiconductor and consumer electronics manufacturers and to evangelize and nurture third-party software applications. So in making this and convincing various manufacturers to put it in their DVD players, they were just hoping to, you know, spread the word of mouth, spread, spread the good gospel of the Nuon, saying, hey, you can't just sell DVD players, you can also sell games too. Get on, the, on that game market you love so much. <clears throat> in case you're wondering how this plays, it plays like Puzz Loop. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Puzz Loop. Oh, God. It's actually very well suited for the Nuon. We'll get to that in a second. Blah, blah, blah. A DVD player with the Nuon technology embedded inside will not only offer the ability to play great video games and family software, but also have high quality DVD playback, a rich graphical user interface, smoother fast forward, rewind, and slow motion, and many other features not possible in today's systems. So like I said, a DVD player, but better. Oh, I don't like that question. They describe the process of embedding software in it as a Trojan horse, which is uh, accurate. <laughs> I'd say so, right? I, I guess. Hold on. Now you may be asking, how did VM Labs and Nuon get started? Well, the ideas were formed in 1995. After an initial round of seed funding, the architecture was developed in detail pretty much at the end of the Atari Jaguar's lifespan. In fact, many of the key people involved in the creation of the Nuon were directly off of the Atari Jaguar, and in many ways you can think of this as the Jaguar 2. Around half the library is like sequels or remakes of existing Jaguar games, just to put that in perspective. The CEO was Richard Miller, former VP of technology for Atari Corporation, and head of the team that created the Atari Jaguar console hardware itself. Meanwhile, the VP of third-party development, Bill Rebach, was VP of R&D and technical support at Sony Computer Entertainment America. What? He was okay, that I did not know. Essentially the father of the NetEurose platform. Hmm. He also yeah. was responsible for bringing titles such as Doom, Myst, and Wolfenstein 3D to Atari's Jaguar. So now that we're all caught up, uh, too long didn't listen. Basically, the Jaguar 2 is what we're looking at today. I... damn. As far as controllers are concerned, to uh, follow up on what we said before, all games support control via the Nuon's included DVD remote. And every single Nuon games manual will tell you not to do that if it's at all possible. Merlin, Merlin's Racing, for instance, uh, specifically says it's not recommended. Don't do it. Do not use the, the controller to control these games. Uh, the first time we showcased this thing, we did that, and it did not go well. You cannot control video games with a DVD remote via infrared. It just doesn't work. At least four official controllers exist, uh, many of which are based on N64 controllers for god knows whatever reason. The one we're using today is considered one of the best controllers due to its low latency, 
but it has its own flaws, which we'll get to as we encounter them in later games. Another fun fact, Nuon games have the capacity to save player data via a memory card peripheral, which was never released, so instead you have to use passwords to continue in every single game. Wow, I actually lasted as long as my intro spiel did. Sorry! Good work! I, I no, that's perfect, actually. Well, I'm actually about to fail, so... Oh, maybe not. No, hold on. No, it's... 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 Alex is done for. Let me just... yeah. There you go! Actually, you hold on to it for okay. the time being. Oh, I don't like touching it. It's nasty. Also, thank you to Sasquatchless <laughs> for the 34 month reset. We appreciate that. Thank you. All right, skip through this, and we're gonna we're gonna attempt to do a first live on Twitch.tv. <clears throat> we're going to play two player ballistic. Alex is gonna use the controller, and I'm going to use the DVD remote because I hate myself. Let's do are, this. Are you okay? Don't do this to yourself, honey. Push start, Alex. No, Danny. Let the torture begin. I know 2020 is bad, but no. Why don't you pick versus mode, and we can have a nice even match at ballistic. There we go. <laughs> no, don't make it harder for yourself, Angel. I was, I was just testing it out. Okay. So for this particular game in two-player mode, you plug the controller into port one, and the DVD remote acts as controller two. This is not consistent between games. Uh, some games require you to have the controller in port two, and the DVD remote acts as port one. Right now, I'm the player on the right, and the horrible thumbstick on the DVD remote only allows me to move a little bit at a time, like in little clicks. Oh. So if I want to shoot the ball at a specific location, I have to actually catch up with the rest of the wheel. Hey, I just want to apologize ahead of time. I think I'm going to kick your ass. Yeah, I think you already are, actually. Oh my god, it's not even recognizing half these inputs. This is why you do not want to use the DVD remote. And yet the alternative is spending at least $200 on a dedicated controller that you can't use with any other system. Okay, it's, but... It's truly a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. I've lost. This, it wasn't even close. <laughs> I was going to say, this is also one of the, like, my favorite games, so... I didn't know you were a Puzzloop fan. I love Puzzloop! You into Magnetica? Yes! What I about, actually uh, am. What about that weird one with the people? What was that one called? Oh! Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about! I haven't played it in... Tokyo Crash Mobs. Yes! I actually don't have a copy of that, but I love it in concept. I've played a little bit of it, and it is excellent. Is my side moving faster? Yeah, because I'm making it go faster, because I'm playing well. I see. Yeah, again, the secret is I'm actually not terrible at this, unlike basically every other video oh, game. I can barely move this thing. Please read my inputs, I beg of you. I apologize for this. It's giving me all the wrong ball colors. Oh, please. Well, if nothing else, this is the world's first two-player footage of a Nuon game. That's true! There's Savor actually not a lot of this on YouTube. You have a choice in life. Life. You either no. have you either have a complete Nuon collection or someone who's willing to play games with you. It's <laughs> never both. Is a rare opportunity. Oh my god, this is neck and neck, Danny! I didn't... Is it really? Yes, actually, yes! I I was thinking of some... I, I spaced out for a second and you got the head of me. Oh, wait, no. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's what okay. I'm talking about. I got some combos, too. Check it out. That's like a five combo, a six combo, a seven combo. Eat it! Ah, crap. Eat all of it. Don't, don't make me eat things! <laughs> I'm having so, dinner after the stream, no! So what you may have seen is this is a pretty basic port of Puzzloop. Uh, frame rate's not great, but honestly, if there was one game that you could play theoretically with a DVD remote, it would be this one. It keeps it very simple. Please. Oh, God. Just barely. Alex is the winner. I Good am work, the winner. Alex. Two so P now. lose. Wow. And that's just the first of many games you can enjoy with your new on platform. What do you think so far? Is enjoy the right word? Well, I will say this is it is this is a game I love. I genuinely love uh, M uh, Mitchell's Puzzle Loop. So I don't know if this is a uh, if I should uh, judge the console on a game that I enjoy. I should see what else it, it wants to do. But I will That's say fair. I will judge this controller. Hand her if over. I judge it as shit. They call it the Stradivarius of controllers. No, they shouldn't. Uh, they also, just for the sake of completion, let's have a look at the options mode. This is a recorder you buy from Walmart because you're forced to buy your music class of controllers. <laughs> Those are your options. 
and we'll take one very quick look at the stage mode, which is essentially arcade mode, only there's a limited number of balls and you have to clear them all out. Yes! That's it, I finished stage one. Nice! There's infinite stages of this. Actually, there's probably a limited number, I just haven't gotten very far. That is Ballistic, courtesy of Infogram, aka Infogrames, and Mitchell. Thank you, Mitchell. Thank you, Mitchell. All right, it's time to get to the real shit. The one game everyone thinks of when they think of the Atari Jaguar is Tempest 2000, Jeff Minter's trippy classic shoot 'em up in space. Well, guess what? There was a sequel exclusively for the new on. This is Tempest 3000. Did this come out on any other consoles? Well, here's the thing. Okay. So there's Tempest 2000. Yes. It was remade essentially for the Sega Saturn with some new features where it was also called Tempest 2000. Mm -hmm. That version was ported to the PlayStation where it was called Tempest X3 or Tempest 3X. That is not the same as Tempest 3000, despite the confusing name. Mm. This one is entirely unique to the new one. Oh, well, damn. Uh, in terms of additions, this adds a new kind of bonus level and literally dozens of new enemies. There's seriously like 30 enemies that are in this that aren't any other that aren't in any other version of Tempest. I just hope this works. This is the most expensive game, well, one of the most expensive games for the new on. Currently, uh, legit copies will run you around 100 bucks. This is a DVD-R. Take that, Jeff Minter. Jeff's gonna find us on Twitter and yell at us. He hasn't gotten royalties from this for, well, probably ever. Okay, well, Jeff, don't yell at us. I'm a furry too, you can't yell at me. <laughs> yeah, furry solidarity. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, you can yell at me. It's... Have a go at Tempest 3000. Okay, uh, question from chat. Can the new one run any DVD-R, or does it have to be formatted in a certain way? Um, Nuon games are formatted in a certain way, but it's standard ISO format. You don't need to download, like, Disc Juggler or anything to burn it. Some options here. I don't think we need to change anything just yet. Let's just jump right into the game. This is one I won't actually play for very long, because whereas I put in a good half hour on Tempest 2000 during our Jaguar showcase, I can't play this for more than a few minutes. It is honestly nauseating. Thank you, White Taxi, for the 14-month uh, reset. Do appreciate that. Enjoy Tempest 3000. Thank you. The nauseating game for not to furries say, by furries. Not to say it's a bad game, though. No. Just no. if you can stomach it. It just has a, an entrance requirement. Like, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't play this game. So, if you played T2K for the Jaguar, this will be very similar. You go around the tube. You shoot stuff, you collect power-ups. That's just how it... That, that's how it be. Shaxpert calls this, uh, crack this schmuck. It really is. It, yeah, I saw some other people saying it has, like, uh... Hacker energy, crack energy. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all the games you can play with a DVD remote, this is probably one of the worst. Even though the input's very simple, it's just left and right and shoot. Like, you do not want to have to do that on a remote. Otherwise, it's very similar to Tempest 2000. You get power-ups. Uh, the power-ups do different things in each level. It's not a set, like, power-up loadout. Some levels give you an auto-fire feature. Some levels give you the ability to jump. Here, it's more like a hover. It's <laughs> essentially remixed from what you're already familiar with on Jaguar. Thank you, X Mortis, for the 100 unicorn bits. X Mortis says, if Jeff comes knock and give him these bits, I can do it. <laughs> Thank can you. Do. Thank you for the protection bits. Yes. I'll be like, hey, listen, you like, I have a, I have a Ramos, I have an alpaca persona. You have the whatever you have going on. We should be, whatever if not friends, have. then we should have solidarity. Don't sue me. We like Jeff. Yeah, he's fine. Jeff made a bunch of games. I can't play a lot of them, but the ones I can play, I enjoy. Sorry, I had to use a super oh! zapper. That's that's the worst thing. Uh, this can is... you can you see why I can't play this for more than I, a few minutes? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, that was for the safety of our audience. There, sorry. Safety of me too. <laughs> so I died there. 
Uh, the game doesn't do a great job of telling you whether you've progressed or died. It's all kind of ambiguous, which I find kind of frustrating. In fact, there's a lot of things about this game I find kind of frustrating. It's not good. It's not on the same level as the other Tempests. Not even the fucked up ports they made for Saturn and PlayStation. Uh, if you're expecting Tempest 2000, this one is way more difficult. It's got these backgrounds which just kind of tank the frame rate sometimes and are hard to look at to begin with. Yeah. Alex is now looking exclusively at his phone, which I don't blame him I for. I just needed to take a moment from away from seeing flashing lights in my eyes. It's not to say it's a terrible game, though. It's just oh, no, a little no. bit inferior to what came before, which is kind of a disappointment because usually there's a pretty clear line of improvement and updates to the formula. Good music, though. I feel like I should be playing this game while on MDMA. <laughs> you could. I'm sure Jeff Minter would approve. <laughs> Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to the menu to turn off the backgrounds that may improve the, uh, the viewability. I say backgrounds. No. Level names are real or procedurally generated or whatever that is. Yes. You can also look at <laughs> no, then, <laughs> pretty good. You can also look at the uh, the figures. There's a nice llama for you. I love it. The Tempest logo. Yes. Uh, some kind of spark. Yes. Yes. Numbers. Yes. 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 Thank you for the llama, Jeff. And then when you push one of the buttons, they disappear and sometimes they don't come back. Okay, I figured out how to make it come back. So what do you say we enter some passwords? Do you want to see this game at level 100? No. <laughs> well, we'll Alex, go for it. you don't have to look at it. Okay. Okay, why don't you, uh, why don't you read from the chat while I slowly All enter right. these passwords? Uh, chat wants to be at level 100. Uh, you know what, chat? Chat's also been just saying yes over and over. Yes, yes, yes. So the first password I'm going to enter ah, I heard that. is Chupacabra. Mm -hmm. That makes you invincible. This controller requires a lot of force to be enforced on the, the D-pad. It's not an easy thing to press. Chupa. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, chat's uh, bawling at us. They're saying yes at us. They are highlighting their messages. They are just having a ball. Okay, now we can enter the level password. Okay. Yes. Apparently in, uh, let's see, uh, Tempest X3, uh, you can uh, enter the word yes for a uh, special treat. Mm-hmm. Jeff Minter has long been a member of the furry community. Yes. Yes, as the game says, yes, I remember them from the, uh, uh, from the furry elephant community back in the day. Listen, I wish this, this all- This password screen is a real challenge, you know, to see this background here. I, I wish all, uh, UI, UI, uh, user interfaces used, uh, the sounds of, uh, ungulates and just someone saying yes over and over again. Yes. Okay, let's do it. What does Tempest 3000 look like at level... 129. This is what it looks like. Alright! Photosensitive people, please look away, I beg of you. I'm looking away. So, at this point in the game, uh, the webs just start rotating on their own, which fucks with your controls as well as your brain. The levels tend to be very quickly over, too, so the enemies just kind of swarm you. Here's the problem here. I reached level 130. Uh, the documentation claims there's 100 levels. I played on to level 140 using invincibility, and I didn't see any end in sight. Uh, Jeff Minter at one point claimed that he was using procedurally procedural generation to create these levels, at least the latter ones. And honestly, I don't think there's an end to this game. I think it's actually endless. If anyone can uh, prove me wrong, or just claim otherwise, I'll believe you. 
What is even happening here? What is this? <laughs> have fun! Uh, Jeff Minter didn't work on TX3, uh, so they didn't have to pay him. Damn. Yeah, that was outsourced to uh, High Voltage, I think. Mm -hmm. This brought him back. This is a pure Jeff Minter production. It's, it's got that vibe. It's mm -hmm. got that vibe. So I guess they included Yip in that because there was another furry on the team. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, Danny turned on procedurally generated names. Yeah. A lot of this game is procedurally generated, to the point where it may, in fact, be endless. Has anyone ever reached this? The end of it? Will they ever? Will you be the first? Don't try. Yes. Uh, uh, Hulex, yes. This is the same dude as Space Giraffe. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. I don't know. Have we seen enough of this? I think this is about my limit. <laughs> uh, Chad's calling this mind control. I saw a bunch of other people say this was MK Ultra. Oh, yeah. How many of you been, have been activated at this point? Um, Danny. I definitely have. Okay. You may now do my bidding. Okay. My bidding is to continue to watch this stream. Thank I, you. I thought your bidding was going to be like... To get another Nuon controller. Send me don't. infinite Nuon controllers. Oh, don't. Well, that was fun. That's the system showpiece and the one game that they show off at conventions when they happen to have a Nuon available. Tempest 3000. Is it the best game for the system? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry if you expected a more uh, definitive answer there. No, that's just... <laughs> Raku! The Kennedys are fine, don't talk about that! <laughs> ah, boy. So, Tempest 3000 can be considered the first uh, retail release Nuon game. It had a model number of 11101. Up next is the game with model number 11102. Freefall, 3050 AD. Thank you, I asked for the uh, 25 bits who says you now all feel the urge to adopt a one pound dog. <laughs> a one pound llama, thank you. <laughs> Hey, that llama's too fucking small. I know. Oh no, that that llama is sick as shit. Help it. Please help that llama. So for many years, this was a Nuon exclusive and considered one of the system sellers, or at least a reason to buy the system. In a very recent development, uh, recent as of 2019, an unreleased Xbox version of this game was discovered, and it was actually finished up and released via archive.org by YouTuber Modern Vintage Gamer, so hey, big ups to you. him, good work. And believe it or not, if this game looks interesting to you and you want to play it on a modern PC, you can do that. It's on Steam for $1.99. Oh shit, cool! So you don't need a new on, you don't need the $100 disc that this goes for nowadays. You can just play it on your, your old PC. What this game does have is an extremely lengthy and self-indulgent introduction. Yes! My favorite! So there's a sea virus. It's threatening humanity. Mm. Psycho caught! And, yeah, just like in the Jetsons, we took to the skies to survive. Don't think about what's down on the Earth, it's just the Flintstones doing their thing. Okay. I gotta say, the video playback on the Nuon, top notch. Look at this smooth as butter frame rate. You know, I would, I would expect that from a DVD player. Yeah. Still. Hey, no hovering. Well, yeah, well. I want to go to the gay casino. <laughs> what about the gay burger bar? Mm, is it gay? If it, it is, I'll be. go. I will not go to any straight burger bars anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Got robots with giant hammers. Wow. Is this Cyberpunk 2077? Yes. Blom this is a very blombie punk game. Yes, yes. Blombie punk. This is Cyberpunk 2076. <laughs> Look, it was in development for a really long time, all right? I would... I would love a gay burger bar. What? I <laughs> say, why don't we all do it now? We're not over... But I, I guess now is not the time to open a gay burger bar or any burger bar. Yeah, give that a few months. Okay. 
Well, this is going to go on for a while, so to set your expectations for what this game is, it's skydiving action. It's a game what? that takes you way up in the sky and just plops you down on your long descent to Earth, and you got to battle people who are also skydiving at the same time. It's actually very confusing and not much fun. But it does have this intro. This is a great intro, I gotta say. Please drop corp. Chat calling this a Star Wars prequel, pilot wings. Do you play as a cop? Do you play as a fallen cop? I think so, actually. <laughs> you play as a skydiving policeman. Oh, that's so funny! <laughs> Now, this is important to the story. He has to select his armor. Wow, nice ass. <laughs> You're not wrong, but... <laughs> Drop cops, black cops. Thank you, Chad. Oh, yeah, magic boots. Mm hmm Because you don't need a parachute in the future. You just need this cop suit. Take note of that little power loader back there, the thing with the grab, the grabby arms. I'm gonna see him again later. Okay. Status, launch. Oh, launch. This does warrant this music. I love it. This is so overdramatic. It's so self-serious. Oh my god. And it hasn't done anything to earn it. It, it rules. Is, it is so indulgent. That's fantastic. Exactly, Smebble. The uh, he's got the round butt to uh, cushion himself when he falls. <laughs> Restricted area. I there saw the new one logo. Oh, good, the new one exists in the future. <laughs> what do you Dive think? Dive into DVD. What do you think of that for a tagline? In this world, the heavens can be hell. <laughs> oh my God, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that title. Yes. Screen. I'm all in! No, no way! I'm all in! So what I'm actually going to do is cheat, <laughs> first of all. Thank you. Because this game is impossible, and I need all the help I can get. Okay, we need to push. And it gives you no indication if the thing works, so I'm actually going to enter it a couple more times. Up, down, left, right. Right, left, down, up. Up, down, left, right. Right, left, down, up. Press. B four times, four, four times, R four times. Okay, now we're ready to start the game. Okay, let me just adjust the screen real quick. No easy mode. Damn. Rude. Auto air brake. I don't even know what that is. Please turn it on. Let's play mission one. All right. Are you ready for action? I'm ready for... I'm sorry to say this, but I'm ready for big boot. Sky rat! I will not say anything else. I saw sky rat. Yep, there's a sky rat. Can I watch out for the sky rats? Can I be a sky rat? Sure. Thank you. In 3050 AD. All right, here's the game. This is what you're looking at for the majority of it. So using the D-pad, you can just kind of do this. Just kind of lean different ways. What the game doesn't really tell you is to achieve full range of movement, you need to hold down the L button. And that lets you look around and shoot, all the, shoot all the things that are shooting at you. I mean, this seems like a game made, like, this is like a, this is absolutely a Law & Order SVU original game where they're like, uh... <laughs> One of they, these games. They call the game, uh, Free Fall 3050 AD. They, they're selling drugs in it to kids. You get yes. high score. Get high in my real life. Good one. <laughs> that was terrible. Don't think. Don't. No, no. So sometimes you need to actually do look at the ground because you'll occasionally see, see things coming up at you. Like these rings that recharge your energy. Some things give you more ammo. Uh, you can adjust your pose like this. This lets you dive faster. Or you can get out of it and just kind of slow your descent. A lot of things you'll either need to accelerate or decelerate in midair to catch up to or let catch up to you. And that's a lot of this game's complexity in a nutshell. There's a first person mode, which is basically unusable in my experience, so don't do it. I think there's only two weapons. There's this unlimited use laser and grenades, which are just a different looking laser. 
This is a very confusing game. I have to try the Xbox version at some point to see if it's, uh... <laughs> How the fuck is this? I'm sorry, pardon me, but... Yeah. Hey, where's that sky rat? This is a hardcore game for hardcore gamers. Those red things, those are nothing but sky rats. We've okay. been shooting them all along. Oh, shit, okay. Alright, yeah. let's dive. Die faster. Let's get away from these guys. Now, it was rumored for a while that you needed uh, a new on controller with an analog stick to play this, but a D-pad will work just fine, so any controller will work. Uh, you do not need to buy a specific controller just to play this game. That would be pretty fucked up, though. <laughs> I beat a level? This... I'm sorry, but this has been the fakest game you've ever so shown me. I'm not quite sure what I did, but I beat the level. Look at that lady on the left. <laughs> Fantasy! Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, yeah, Magmaran, that did look like those cool city maps that kids play on with like the, the roads and everything. APD! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is the future of Austin law enforcement. Oh god, with what? <laughs> okay, we have to destroy the detonators at the casino slash burger bar. <laughs> Okay, I was gonna say, with what Abbott's been saying about Austin <laughs> PD, maybe, God. He's gonna he's gonna go through with that capital cop zone, except it's gonna be all skydiving cops. I'd be okay Com with that. Combine the cops with the Space Force. Ugh. City exit, 100 meters. Let's get dropping. I could see Austin having a gay burger bar, but I think we, it, if we had one, it would be extremely expensive, and the burgers wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, true. <laughs> no offense to Austin's overpriced burger culture. This is our future, so be sure to pay attention. Okay. This will be reality in a few short uh, centuries. I, 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 if I'm alive to see a bunch of, like, robo-woman statues all around town, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> How much do you think rent is inside there? Oh, a billion dollars <laughs> with inflation. <laughs> okay, do we hit this, or I guess so. There's no tutorial in this. Uh, the manual is very lengthy. Uh, lengthy enough to be an instant turnoff when I tried to read it. Like, my, <laughs> my brain just refused to process any of the information in it. Is this game worth learning? I guess that's up to you. And honestly, the price of entry, $1.99 on PC, isn't that much. So if this has you curious, you go ahead and buy this. Probably need to slow down, huh? No, wait, that's the speed up. Platform imminent. Enemies surrounding me. There's the rings. Go through the rings. Do it. See what I mean about there being a billion things you have to keep track of at once while you're falling through the air? That's why I'm like, this seems fake. It's too much. I can't think like a space cop in 3015. My brain isn't big enough. Platform imminent. Is that a good thing? Bad thing? Okay, so the PC version and the Xbox version of this game both have tutorials, so... Oh, okay. So I guess this was the first version released, and those were just, like, iterations on this. Go to landing mode. Uh, how? How? How do? Oh, shit. I think I should have landed. Help, I'm upside down. Mission failed! It's okay, just keep falling through Austin. Yeah, it'll be fine. Hey, that place had games. I guess pinballs is still around. That's good, I like pinballs. Are you just gonna let me keep playing while the... All the game's over. That's fine. Gotta get the freaking rings. There we go. I know the rings recharge your health. That's one thing I under understand. I don't so much get the rest of it, though. Let's have a look at these other people. Well, you're falling. Oh, this is dizzying. You've got a taxi rank now. Um... Do? Oh, yeah, taxi rank. What? Why ask why? Why not just take in the atmosphere? True. I should also mention, like I said, a lot of the time you're going to want to hold down the L button to increase your range of movement. Actually very painful on this controller. <laughs> like, it's physically demanding. You have to push down the L button really hard and also push down the D-pad, which also requires a lot of force. Let's try that again. Okay, you got this. You got this. One more attempt. Okay. Also, believe it or not, we made our way through a decent chunk of the game. There's only four levels, and this is level two. Wait, Kaizo, really? Is is are, are you are you doing a, a, a one of your famous goofs, or do they really call uh, 
taxi wait areas in Britain taxi ranks. I believe it. I believe it too. But you could tell I me believe, any I believe anything British people say. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're British, you could tell me anything about the about Britain, and I'd believe you. It's a real problem. I've been scammed many times. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's called a taxi rank. Okay, thank you, Kaizo. Well, now we know. You could you could make something up though, and we believe it. It's fine. Billboard imminent. Well, I should, <laughs> billboard. I sure did smack indeed. into it. Let's keep going. Let's shift into this mode. I assume this is not the landing mode. When it says to land, I guess I should... Uh, C up, uh, yellow up, activates landing mode. No idea what that is on our controller. I know what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's, you, uh, It's this one. Yeah, oh. okay. So you're... Nice. Where do I go? Oh, it gives you uh, better maneuverability, too. Oh, cool, cool. Okay, okay. Let's land right here. Boing. <laughs> Ow! I think I just broke my ankles. That's fine. That's a power-up of some sort. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna handle detonators? How loud are these button presses through the microphone? I have to wonder. This is a very plasticky controller. It is It is a loud one. I don't know if it's coming through. Try to let us know if it is, but... I mean, we can't make it not go... Okay, they can hear some of it. We can't make it not go through, but I think it's... I think it gives the extreme character, IMHO. <laughs> Mission failed. Let's head on back and look at level three, why don't we? Hey, I never noticed the absolutely massive Samsung logo on this absolutely massive DVD player. It's a very big system, yes. It is big. Mission three. What do you think we're going to be doing in Mission three? I bet we're going to be falling. Uh -huh. I bet we're going to be shooting. And I bet it's... <laughs> Well, I take back what I said. Hold on. Big twist. Jet Punk, Cat, tag your, and Hammerhead. Tag yourself. Jet Punk has like, a, has like an 18 pack there. I love it. I'm Jet Punk. Okay. Cool. This game has an aesthetic, if nothing else. Uh, Jordan, I think we're going to go into some more of the, uh, some more details about this controller in a few, because there are some secrets to share. Yeah, eventually. We'll get into that in the next game, actually. Okay, good. This freaking controller. I spent so many years pining for this thing, and the reality is just so crushing. <laughs> Not a laugh, but isn't that the way it always goes? Yeah. This is... Maybe, maybe it's like, you know, I actually did have big plans for 2020, and needless to say, that they, none of them came The came Nuon is a microcosm of all our lives, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's essentially what it is. Right here, you have to actually battle people. And this is where the air, air brake comes in handy. Uh, I have it set to automatic, though, so I'm automatically catching up with these people. Good. Usually you'd have to adjust your speed using your various uh, formations, poses. Man, I am I am just sad that the new one died and that the other new one died in such a funny way before I could actually like, and I didn't actually record it because I would have loved to have that. Yeah, I wish I could have recorded that moment, but that's a that's a Danny exclusive. That's mm. something I'm gonna take with me for the rest of my life. I just want to see the new one saying goodbye. Honestly. Kneeling on the floor, powering the thing up after so many years of inactivity, being like, ah, oh, welcome back, old friend, and then just seeing goodbye, and then nothing else ever. Uh, Nelson, the new one died by Danny turning it on. Yeah. And it's it scrolled by the word hello, and then it scrolled by the word goodbye, turned off, and never turned on again. It was a very polite death. <laughs> very dignified. <laughs> I'm just mad it didn't do that on stream. Like you, that's 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 like raining I'm not. gold. That would be the end of the stream. I mean, okay, fair, 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 fair. But but think of the clips, Danny. There's so many dudes you have to fight in midair, and there's a lightning storm, and then you have to look down and see the rings you have to fly through and the power-ups you have to get. Can I get this one? I think that thing literally just stole my power-up, so that's cool. Let's exit Skyfall. Uh, level complete. I didn't kill a single enemy, but Wait. sure. I just realized that happened this year. The what? new one knew. The yeah. new one saw that it was 2020, and it was like, no thank you. <laughs> I don't want any part of this. Mm -hmm. Fantasy. <laughs> it kills me every time, I'm sorry. 
booked us a stay at the Hotel Asuka. I'm just thinking, is that robot compartmentalized into like five or diff six different uh, uh, apartments? And like, are they in different parts of the body? Is it more expensive to live in the head than like other places? I gotta know. Destroy thruster and turrets before shooting the cruiser hatch off. Got it. Before. Bring back free smoke. Oh, well, you know what? If you want to bring back free fall 3058, you can do that. Make a sequel. Good. Have yourself some fun. Live your best life. <laughs> Make the skydiving police simulator of your dreams. <laughs> well, maybe not, but... You get all that? Uh, Shoot off the thrusters, then go inside, and uh, something about a hatch. Love it. Got it. Hands already cramping up. What a cool controller. Please buy it off me. I need to recoup my investment. Please buy, please buy things from Danny. <laughs> Mission three. Area two. Guess what? We're skydiving again. I wish he'd let you go on foot. Yeah. How about a beach level? Why aren't you playing volleyball? Well, there's something down here I should probably... Yeah, I gotta speed up to catch up okay. to it. And I, I agree, Ed. This game does seem like it would uh, be better as just one kind of level in a different game. Yeah, I would agree with that. Let's, uh... Oh, it's going too fast. No, I need to... Do the assume the no the no don't do, do the do the slow pose and then look up. Oh, it's gone. I don't think it's coming back. Hello, giant space cruiser. Ma'am, I miss you. Well, goodbye. Huh. It's a lonely <laughs> existence out here in Skyfall. Cylinder. Yes, exactly. This is how this is how Cyber Santa goes down the chimney in the future. There we go. I hit the rings at least. Let's check out level four. Okay. And then we can move on. This is one of the more fully featured and for a time exclusive Nuon games, so it deserves its uh, time in the spotlight. I just love that title screen. That title screen is so good. Something else. Just say that. Uh, the New Game King, I have no idea how you launch for your grenades. Grenades are the B button. It's just a slightly more powerful laser. Boo. It's not very exciting. Level 4, the final level of Freefall 3050 AD. What awaits us? Gay Burger Bar, Gay Burger Bar, please. Head to the Gay Burger Bar. Ha <laughs> 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 Holy shit, watch out, ma'am! At least she kept her guitar. Cortex Gunner! Oh no, the rock oh, icon no. Verity Divine! <laughs> Look at that outfit, Jesus! <laughs> her hobby is air guitar! Verity, no! I changed my mind. This is the coolest game I've ever played. He's put a bomb inside the guitar! No! And, and... And she can't get rid of her guitar because it's her favorite thing. You have to shoot magic beams in her guitar. Oh, okay, okay, this is good now. Be careful because Miss Divine is. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mysterious. Is is, is she also a bomb? The guitar's a bomb. The lady's a bomb. Oh You're my a bomb. god, this is just Suzuki Bakuhats. <laughs> it really is. Why aren't we playing that? Listen, we 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 all want to play Suzuki Bakuhats, but no uh, one wants to make the sequel. What, well, no what, one wants to finance the sequel because of cowards. this? Got my celebratory hams in the air. Hey, I just want to say that pose looks like the patent for the uh, stop the ad by playing McDonald's thing. <laughs> Say McDonald's. McDonald's. Oh, here we go. There's the there's the tour bus. There goes the tour bus. You just gotta t turn around and t t hit the tour bus. There we go. Let's 
Uh, I don't like that screen. Way more convoluted than it should be. Oh yeah, shoot the lady, right? You got it. Save me, please. Uh... You have to shoot, like, the D-Mag at her? I don't even know what that is. I don't know what the D-Mag is. I couldn't tell you. I have a feeling this isn't gonna go well for us. Go up. Look up at the goddamn tour bus. Ram girl. <laughs> or shoot with D-Mags. <laughs> what a, uh, what a she's command. She's falling now. Okay, she's, she blinks when I shoot her. Is that so good? I don't know. Let's keep doing it. I mean, this is fine, right? You might consider this a video game. Uh, it's a game. There's game things about it. There's objectives that quickly zoom by before he can do anything about it. There's a spinning lady in the sky with a bomb guitar. <laughs> so easy to let go of the L button and have no idea that you've done so before it's too late. Was... Who are you? The other guy is there. What's he doing here? I'm getting zapped. I don't think we're gonna save this lady. Sorry to say. Rip. Can yeah. I have a reticle? Can I... <laughs> just, just a reticle would help so much. Chat's been commenting about how very bad this background is. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't great. It ain't great. Looks like we're about to die. This lady is spinning endlessly through the sky with her guitar. I'm being zapped with lasers. But my ass is fantastic. It is, I will say, they did a very nice job of it. Well, that's Freefall. 3050 AD, a chilling look at our future, courtesy of the Nuon. Thank you, Nuon. One final fun fact. Uh, there's passwords for this game. If you didn't cheat, you need to enter those to continue. The passwords for the levels in order are We need to think up some passwords. Those are all the passwords I just read to you. <laughs> Freefall, 3050 AD. Beautiful. Our next game, model 11103, the third game in the Nuance Retail Library, is Merlin Racing. Now this one, this is a meaty game. I'm going to enjoy this. Finally, a game with some meat on its bones. One second, let's get this. So Merlin Racing, I'm actually excited for this one. Because I've never really... I've never seen it played the way it's meant to be played. Mm hmm And now you can. Yeah, playing this one with a DVD remote was just pure torture. I couldn't finish a single race. Couldn't get anywhere. But now I'm looking forward to finally making some progress. This game here is a loosely affiliated sequel in a kind of loosely affiliated series to begin with. It's from developer Miracle Designs who before this made Atari carts on the Atari Jaguar. You might think of this as a sequel. This also got a pseudo-sequel on the PS1 with Miracle Space Race, also developed by the same team, also mm -hmm. Minmo. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, hey! And their final game in the series for the PS1 was Hooters Road Trip. <laughs> Yes, thank so, you. So, from the makers of Hooters Road Trip comes the furry kart racer of your dreams. One second here, let me just use this. Oh, I can name myself? What's my name? It's Danny, unless it's changed recently. Yeah. Go for it! Oh. Aw. Dippy. I thought you were going to put in, like, a, a rude word. When have I ever? You know, we should have put in the name Merlin, yeah. Call it our, our own race. Ready to do this? Yes. So there's plenty of different modes here, but what we're interested in is the adventure mode, which is quite a bit like Diddy Kong Racing on N64. That's a game I like a lot. I've been wanting a, a kart racer like that game for a really long time. Is this that game? I think we're the first, well, we're not the first ones to find out, but I think we are about to find out, finally. Now that you've got a... Now that you have a controller that, that functions. 
I'm getting big Diddy vibes from this, yeah. So this is how the game begins, with no explanation. Uh, believe it or not, this is a character select screen. Oh! Oh, I thought so, this was... okay. So you can choose Polly. Polly. Choose Rocco. I like Rocco a lot. What's, what's Rocco doing there? What Rocco is, is uh, Rocco is opening a safe like a thief. I see. He's being a little bastard, so he's good. Sly Cooper's cousin. Mm -hmm. We also have... He had. He's making a boat. Boat. Okay. Motor. Oh, oh. oh. Don't mess with this animal. Holy crap, okay. That's Chloe. Hey, Chloe. She will ruin your ass. Chloe is like half of my friend's personas. <laughs> yeah, I've, no, seriously. I've seen Chloe a lot on Twitter. Yeah. We also got Aww, this I little like dragon that. here named Cadmus. Aw, they're adorable. Nice flip, Cadmus. Good job, Cadmus. It's this animal just vibing. Ah, uh, I wish that were me. Good old flossy. Oh, <laughs> they're flossing! That was the password I entered in uh, Tempest 3000, and also the name of one of Jeff Minter's sheep, I'm pretty sure. Aww. Nut. I love them. They, they are also... That's... Chaz is also vibing. Mm-hmm. I hope all the Chazes in chat are vibing too. You know, sometimes I just look over at the chat and you I'm just... glad I'm glad we have the group that we do. <laughs> oh, this is me. I'm hungry! <laughs> That's Hogan. Alright! Hollywood Hogan. <laughs> Jesus. No, it changed my mind. This is me. Oh my god, I love that. Sleeping with my eyes open as usual. What is that? That's Argyle. Hey, an armadillo, uh, 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 an anteater? Uh, well, you're the furry, figure it out. I, I wish I knew. This is an armadillo. That's an armadillo. Sure. Oh, That's yeah. That's a if I've ever seen one. Oh, I love Picasso. Hey, Picasso, nice artwork. I guess. This is a little, uh... Just, just huffing those spray paint flowers. I was going to say. I was going to say, I think you should, uh, you know, maybe put some uh, outlines on that. Maybe make the background distinctive from the foreground, whatever. Wow. All right, who are we picking? <laughs> Um, I don't know. They're all genuinely very good, but I kind of, I kind of want to go with the dragon or the raccoon. I'm sorry. I know we got a couple of raccoons watching, so mm -hmm. let's uh, let's represent the raccoons. Throw them a bone. Rocco. They're psyched. Uh, the room has non-Euclidean geometry. That's how they're all fitting in there. Yeah, it was a very, very big room. <laughs> So you won't believe how long this intro is. I think there's a way to quickly skip through it, so I'm going to do that. After many years, Prava the Evil Witch finally found a way to entrap Merlin the Magician. Damn. You see, Merlin's power came from a set of four enchanted crystals, the Zistral Crystals. These crystals were carefully hidden by Merlin, as you might imagine, in a place no one would suspect. No one but Prava, that is, who was more clever and cunning than Merlin gave her credit for. Late one night, after many spells and incantations, Prava d divined the location of the enchanted Zistral crystals and promptly stole them. Sheesh. For safekeeping, Prava enchanted four of the largest and most cunning creatures in the universe and charged each with guarding a crystal. With the crystal stolen, it was very easy for Prava to sneak into Merlin's bedroom one night. Oh boy. Whoa, whoa! And imprison him in his sleep. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, no, no. When this was no. done, Prava took control oh. of the castle and enchanted it so that there was no escape. Okay, that's the end of the story, right? Nope, there's still more. Okay. The doors that used to lead to the various castle rooms now led to different dimensions. And as you might expect, these were no ordinary dimensions. Each door led to a racetrack where racing became more than just a game. It became a matter of life and death. This is because Prava bound each track to a key. Oh my god! A key that would open another door somewhere in the castle, you see. And only by winning a race could a key be collected. Of course! However, oh. once, once a key was obtained, a hero could then open another door and conceivably work his or her way through all the doors until he or she came across one of the enchanted guards and by beating them collect one of the Zistral crystals. Okay. If the hero could manage to beat all four of the enchanted creatures and collect four of the Zistral crystals, then he or she could challenge Prava the evil witch and set Merlin free. Are you ready to do this, Alex? 
because there's still more of it. Do you think that you could be the one? <laughs> deserve to win uh, Best Storytelling Game of the Year Awards. Jesus Christ. Hi there, Digby. My name's Athena. Hey, hey, Athena. Merlin's asked me to help your freedom begin a race by entering a door. Each door is numbered and must be entered in order. Coming in first wins you a key to unlock the next door. Unlock five doors and you will receive a special key that opens a special door linked to one of the enchanted crystal creatures. Guardian creatures. Beat the creature in a race and you will be given its sistral crystal. Are we good? I think we're good. Okay. Yes, I. this is just Diddy Kong racing. It's just I, Diddy Kong racing. It has this adventure field where you travel around and collect stuff. It's not as complex as Diddy Kong racing is. It's just a series of doors. And right here is the first key. So let's go on through this door here and begin the adventure. So I have something important to say about the Nuon controller. This one specifically, the Logitech one. Uh, for the first lap, I'm going to use the analog thumbstick. You would think the ideal way to play this game. And I'll just show how that looks as a, as a demonstration. Okay. It's very Diddy Kong-like, or Mario Kart-like if you prefer. Just you pick up items, you use them, you can shoot the other critters. I just want to say this already looks like it's, it's better than using the, the uh, remote. Control. Oh yeah, you can actually make turns for one thing. But one thing I noticed very quickly after starting the game is that these controls are very sluggish. You end up taking a lot of turns really wide. Yeah, that's a wide turn, Dan. You can't really make the tight turns you want, and that made me think, okay, there's some kind of like hopping or sliding or drifting like in Mario Kart or something. Nope, there's just accelerate, brake, and use item. There is no complex mini turbos or anything like that. And that made me think, why, why are the controls like this? I'll never be able to win a race. For the next lap, I'm going to use the D-pad. Okay. Oh, so... Does... Does the analog stick just... The Logitech analog stick, which currently goes for, let me remind you, four to five hundred dollars on eBay, has a design flaw where it does not reach its maximum potential even if you push it as hard as you possibly can to the left or right. It'll only deliver like 90% of the analog movement. So in a game like this, you're gonna miss every single one of your turns. Whereas if you use the D-pad, you'll turn as tightly as you possibly can, and therefore you can win the race. Is and 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 four hundred to four hundred to five hundred dollars, correct? Correct. And and this is one of the best controllers you can buy for the new one. I have a lot of questions about the analog stick with this controller. Ooh, got him. Oh, let's see if I can win this race first. Okay. I've never actually won a race in this game because I was too busy fucking around with the analog and trying to figure out if you could drift or whatever. No, actually the game's very simple, it's just the controllers are broken. Okay, some folks talking about the analog. We'll get to, we'll get to talking about the analog stick for this Yeah, hold up. Don't worry, hold you got on. It. I did my research. Mm -hmm. oh my God, no actually, spoilers. I'm actually going to win a race in this video game. This game that I've had for many years sitting on my shelf mocking me. That raccoon character is front and center on the cover, and they were just making fun of me for so many years, but who's making fun now? <laughs> me, because you hit the... We won the race. So, this isn't unique to me. It turns out all of the Logitech controllers on the market suffer from this particular uh, issue. In fact, it's such a widespread problem that the site I mentioned before, Nuon Dome, actually has a comprehensive guide to modifying the controllers, resulting in this. I just want you to know that this was originally named BigHole.jpg. Yep, that's the original file name on Nuon Dome. It's nuondome.com slash BigHole.jpg. So what you could do after spending 500 bucks on this controller on eBay is you get it home, you take a Dremel, and you just Dremel the shit out of it until the analog stick actually works correctly. Want to call, say again, nuondome.com slash bighole.jpg. Shoutouts to bighole.jpg. Bighole.jpg. So yeah, essentially... This is, this, how much money? It's a lot, but... Isn't it worth it just to get it home and to, to dr just dremel the shit out of it? Just make a new hole for it? It looks like shit! 
Yeah, but it's actually workable after you after you do that. Note that I haven't actually done that as I intend to resell this controller. Please, yes, That's, that's yes. someone else's problem. The thing is, it would it... Would it... Would, would big holing, as I'm calling it now, your controller, would big holing, would that make the controller worth more money or less money? I assume way less money. That's a question I'm not going to find the answer to. Okay, back to the game. I no, just, I need to look at. I just wanted to complain about day. this. You can see what's been so vexing me over the last week as I've attempted to figure out just what the hell the system's problem is. Exactly. You you need to go into big hole mode, Danny. <laughs> you did it, Digby. You won the race. Take this key and continue racing. And as usual, you can save your progress, but the memory card was unreleased, so you gotta copy down a password. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'm sure if the memory card existed, it would also be $500. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. They never... What happened? Did they just, like... Did, did the new one... Did, 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 did the people working on the new one just, like... Did they all just, like, fall off a cliff or something? Well, they probably... Was there a big plane... Was there, like, a day the games died and there was, like, a big plane crash? They saw the writing on the wall and they just decided to cut their losses, I would assume. I guess, but nothing the, came out for this. Where's the two door? I'm looking for a door with the number two on it, as I have two keys. They had this had such big plans. They were gonna do memory. They. It's not a bad plan. I mean, no. you had an install base. People watch DVDs. They needed DVD players. Why not uh, embed a game system in one? Yeah, and as Chad's been mentioning, the PS2 got beat into the punch. Basically, the PS2 it beat into the punch and. The memory card came out for it, and you didn't have to make a big hole in your controller to have it function. <laughs> it was it was just PlayStation.com slash big hole JPEG. You didn't need to do that with a with a dual shock. You don't need to make big hole in dual shock. Yeah. I, I need four Zistral crystals and five special keys to enter. Because I don't know about you, but I used my PS2 as my primary DVD player. Oh, and yeah, me too. I was like, this is fine. This is great. The new one really did just get beat to the punch, it feels like. Good and idea, I just bad timing and extremely bad execution. And I don't know if Dan's going to go into this, but a lot of DVDs even had uh, new one features on them, too. Well, Maybe. not a lot, but four of them, including <laughs> Dr. Doolittle 2. Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes, the Tim Burton remake. Uh, Be Dazzled. Be Dazzled, yes, that was another Nuon uh, feature thing. Hey, I look, him? I found him. Hey, free him. Free him. There's our buddy, Merlin. Free him. I wish I could. And, yeah, the PS2 also played PS1 games, so it was just the best DVD slash game. If you wanted a DVD player slash game console, one existed, and it actually had good games, and again, you didn't have to take a Dremel tool to the DualShock to get it to play. There it is. Okay, after endless searching, I found door number two. <laughs> wow, that was a huge level. Okay, so Bedazzled, Planet of the Apes, Doctor Who Little 2, what was the fourth game? A um, movie, I should say? Anyone want to fill me in? Uh, was it Buckaroo Bans Bonsai? I think that was it, yes. Buckaroo Bonsai, one of the few games to support Nuon features. Merry Christmas, everyone. Okay. Welcome to Christmas Village. Okay. I want to call special attention to the music in this game. I don't know if you've been listening to it, but it's very, very amateurish. <laughs> it, it sounds like music made by someone who hasn't made music before. <laughs> Okay, I disagree with that, because I've made music when I had made music before, and this does sound better than It's it. very simplistic, is the it thing. It is. To be fair, all the music I, I made, I would just do some really bad samples, and then at the end I'd use an applause sample, because I thought it was funny. Not to shit talk anyone, for all I know, it could have just been the programmer trying their best to make music. But for a kart racer that's exclusive to the Nuon, this may not meet expectations, is what I'm trying to say. I mean, it's okay if you use the D-pad and or you've taken a Dremel to your controller. You big hold it. You big hold it, yeah. I'm sorry. All right, chat's calling this basic MIDI, baby source MIDI keyboard. Yeah, this is music by someone who is high on uh, dirt weed. Yes. <laughs> Not even the good stuff. No, nah, this is this is absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. That's the music. Yeah, they're not even on mid or loud. They're on like, they're on like staccato or whatever. It's very quiet. 
<laughs> Staccato. I don't know. What's the... What's the Pianissimo, Salta Alex. Salta voce. Oh, there you go. It's okay, Salta now, voce weed, okay? Now you're, show, now you're showing me up. No, I only know it because there was a uh, Australian comedy show that had a joke where a character was named Salta voce, and they talked very quietly and no one could hear them. <laughs> It joke was, I would write. Well, it was because they said that Sota Voce sounds like a Zoro-type hero, and so they just had a hero who couldn't talk, and it was very funny. If anyone remembers the, the show I'm talking about, I completely forgot. Anyways. So I've been doing my best through this race, and I'm in I'm nowhere close to catching up to first place. I don't think this is going to happen, sorry to say. Still, count your blessings. This is a new on game presented in its full frame rate in component video quality, Streamed live on Twitch. Where else can you see that right now? I'm sorry, Digby. You didn't come in first. Gotta win the race to get the next key. <laughs> so you get to retry, I guess. Okay. That's nice. Did we explore the full world? Oh, door number two was right behind me at the start. I took the long way around. <laughs> Luckily, people have made passwords for this game. Oh, good. Let's enter the very last password. Just fuck me up, Merlin Racing. <laughs> oh, um, so when you push left to right on this stick, or rather the D-pad, most of the time it'll detect it as up left or up right. So it's not a problem in most games, considering stuff like Ballistic or Tempest 3000 only has left to right input, but for games like this, where diagonal input is a thing, you will constantly get false diagonals, and it sucks. Yep, that's it. Moral recordings. The show I was thinking of was the Michaela program. Thank you. I haven't, I haven't thought of that show in years. Except, except when I wanted to sh pretend I knew what what pianissimo was by saying fucking sort of voce. Well, you sounded really smart. <laughs> now this password will give us. 27 keys, 5 special keys, and 4 Zistral Crystals. Fuck! <laughs> False diagonal! There we go. Okay. Password activated. Let's go on the adventure. Ah, the whole world has opened up to us now. We can experience all the content this game has to offer. Let's be, uh, you know what? It started on the armadillo, so let's pick the armadillo. I'm just saying, for someone named Picasso, the art's really standard. It's kind of boring. Okay, okay, good. It did continue. We have 27 keys and 5 special keys. Now, I wonder if it'll let us refight the bosses this playthrough has previously defeated. Because I'm curious to see what those look like. What would a boss fight even look like in Merlin Racing? I just know I hated the bosses in Diddy Kong Racing. Those guys were assholes. That freaking Triceratops. Not to mention Whizpig. <laughs> Fucking Whizpig. Do you want to kick Whizpig's ass? I'd kick Whizpig right in the ass. Alright. So, surprise! This game has multiple modes of transport. You have hovercraft. Well, there goes the penguin. Or whatever that was. Oh, these are explosive eggs. And yep, just like I dreaded, it looks like these boss fights are the same as the boss fights in Diddy Kong Racing. It's a point-to-point -point race that's very unfair. Though I guess at least in this one, the characters aren't laughing at you. Did they laugh at you in Diddy Kong Racing? Did I just insert that memory? I didn't play enough to see them laugh at me, but I assume they do. But I have low self-esteem, so... <laughs> Controls for this are even worse than the cart controls. This? I don't know about this, Chief. Is this it? I, I don't think so. Uh, okay, we, they do laugh in Diddy Kong. You okay, good. <laughs> okay. Glad I didn't just imagine that. Being a very frustrated 10 year old or whatever. We are not big holding this controller. Absolutely not. Whoever buys this controller off of me has the option of big holding it or not big holding it. Boy, that sounds worse every time I say it. 
I'm sorry, but when you when you're like, you need to add some pictures to the layout, and I just saw something called big, and one of them was called, and you're like, add big hole dot jpeg. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I pulled that from the wrong directory. <laughs> no, no, no. They call him big hole. <laughs> I will not apologize. Well, this is one of the boss fights in Merlin Racing. You see the boss for like a couple seconds, and then they pull ahead. You know, considering I have this full setup now, and I spent so long putting it together, I was thinking about recording a long play for this. I've since decided not to, like within the last 30 seconds. Anyone want to fulfill their duty and record a long play of Merlin Racing? How does it end? We gotta find out. Feel free to do that. You you would have to spot you would have to also sponsor the stream for more money than you have to make us do that. <laughs> yeah, we're talking Raid Shadow Legends money. Ah, uh, I don't know about a little more than that. Oh yeah, funny coincidence. Uh, the Raid Shadow Legends offer came in suspiciously close to the time when I bought this new on controller. So mm -hmm. thank you, Raid Shadow Legends. Thank you. It was a very fortuitous thing to happen when it did. You can still download it too. It's uh, beneath. I don't know why I'm pointing to you. It's uh, the the link for it should be below our uh, one of the the panels still up. If you want that bad boy? Okay, who's next? Who's the next boss? Oh, look at this entropy alley. <laughs> <laughs> they get a head start on you. How fucked is that? So this in particular looks a whole lot like Miracle Space Race for PS1, because the entire game is like this. It's sci-fi themed and you're in these weird hovercrafts. So if you want a version of this game that costs $1 instead of $100, plus a $50 player, plus a $300 controller, uh, it's probably the better option. This looks pretty good. Straight up looks like it's from Diddy Kong Racing. This looks like it's from Crash Team Racing. Yeah, I'm getting... This looks good. This yeah. looks like... This is like, oh. The uh, makers of this, Miracle Designs, also produced the... Uh, I think just like the 3D tools you would use to create Nuon games for their SDK. Mm. So they had a big role in shaping what Nuon games look like, for better or for worse. I don't think they had anything to do with the controller. I just want to emphasize that. These are good people. They're not evil. I don't think they're evil. I, I, I wouldn't call the good folks who made... Uh, Logitech, the people who made the Nuon controller. They're evil. Yeah. They... It is pretty evil to design an analog stick without full range. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's a bad design for That's, That's just a bad design. That's... No. It's hard to defend that. I could. I could be like, oh, it makes the games more challenging. It's more challenging to have to dremel over your expensive controller. <laughs> Just ramming into every single bomb. Let's do one more boss and then we'll move on. But Merlin Racing? More playable than you'd think. Also, not a great game. And in fact, it has much better alternatives, both on PlayStation, uh, Atari Karts is on Jaguar. That may be better. I haven't played that game, so I don't know for sure. Okay, we got some info from Revenant, Revenant from Moby Games. Moby Games says when developer, developer Miracle Designs re-released Merlin Racing on the PlayStation, it was split into three separate games sold by different publishers. Oh, is that what happened? The traditional kart racing portion became Rascal Racers, the airboat racing portion became XS Airboat Racing, and the space racing portion became Miracle Space Race. Man, they use every part of the game. That's... Good for them. No! No, you make that one game! That's like... They're robbing these kids! <laughs> no! Yeah, all those PS1 racers were in fact budget games as well. Meaning they were cheap back in the day, and they're probably extra cheap now. I don't see the option to fight the final boss, so instead I'll just fight this boss. Good luck, Danny. Is it Wizpig? I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's not Wizpig. No, it's not Wizpig. Hey, I don't like that they just, they're shitting out ice. Yeah. That's really gross. Really jagged looking ice too. I know, it's like, dude, get some fiber in your diet. Is it even possible to catch up with these boss characters? 
it looks like you have to not hit anything yeah, while well, hitting every boost. Yeah, and but playing incredibly well and possibly so. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry. I hate to say it again, but you probably have to big hole it to be able to do this. <laughs> you don't hate to say it. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. You got me there. I love saying big hole. You shouldn't have. You should have renamed the JPEG file's name. Merlin Racing for Nuon. In conclusion, big hole. Big hole? Let's look at the title screen and see if there's anything else we have to explore. I know there's a couple other modes. There's an arcade mode where you can just pick any track you want. There's a uh, time trial if you want to do that. Let's see what tournament looks like. Oh, look at this! It unlocked all the boss characters. Hey! That's nice. Let's be the witch. Cool. The Keats Cup. Let's do it. Big fan of literature, this cup. That's killing me. Okay, you're 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 lucky I don't know how to mute things. You're good. Merlin Racing. A very versatile game, if nothing else, considering it was split into multiple releases on PS1. Maybe not the system seller you'd been led to believe, though. It's alright. I'm done with this. <laughs> can I, can I, can I do it? Can yeah. I put it up again? Okay, thank you. There it is. There's the big hole. <laughs> There's what the people came to see. And because it's like an, an early, it, earlier internet image before cameras had, it just, there's a vibe to it that just feels very seedy. I love it. I love Big Hole. <laughs> Next up, model number 11104, Iron Soldier 3. Oh, shit. Now, the original, original Iron Soldier we showcased during our Best Atari Jaguar games stream many months ago. Uh, this is the sequel to the sequel. And this game was released on PS1, so there's no reason to play this, but we're going to do it anyway. Just try and stop me. <laughs> I will say the DVD cases are nice. They are fake spray painted gold. That makes me feel special. Sorry. I'm gonna miss these games when I sell them. Oh, all I can think of is big hole. I'm so sorry. Let's move on from. I'm big trying. Hole. Chad isn't helping, but I also exasperated it. So. Now this is a very rare game uh, because it's supposedly bugged and will not play on a majority of Nuon players. In fact, they realized this error and they printed up a second print run with the intent of exchanging it with stores, just like uh, swapping copy for copy, pretty much. Swap the bugged copies with non-bugged ones. After seeing the initial sales numbers, they decided, nope, we're going to dumpster the bug-fixed versions. So the only versions that exist are the bugged versions. What? Luckily, this player plays the game. And if you're a fan of... <laughs> Really long, self-indulgent intros. Yes! <laughs> and if you want to see a big-ass killer robot who doesn't give a fuck, then please enjoy the next several minutes of your life. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me adjust. This intro is ridiculously long. It's also very entertaining. It's, it's practically a short film about giant robots. I love art and I love cinema, so I'm, ex I'm looking forward to this intro. Same. The future. I guess. Shit sucks. But at least there's robots. Okay. See, this console feels like a fever dream. It is! This isn't real at all. Sorry, folks. Yeah, I just made this up to torture myself. Mm -hmm. Pretty good programming, I gotta say. I just made it up to hurt myself, and it worked. The new one. I mean, inventing an entire console is uh, to torture yourself is... Damn, Danny. Let's talk after the show. <laughs> yeah, we have much to discuss. Yes, this is a Criterion edition of Iron Soldier 3. Yeah, to its credit, this video looks way better than it would on PS1. Completely unfiltered and out of control. 
No compression. Look at that. Tanks driving over other tanks. Flame.gif. <laughs> but that's not what you're here to see. What you're here to see is this big boy. Ah, oh, they're big. Hey, there's our power loader friend. Hey, Remember? I know them. <laughs> Haven't seen them in a while. Fresh out of free fall. Hmm. How you doing, buddy? What you been doing? Working at the big ass robot factory? I was gonna say they're making big ass robots. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I gotta go, I gotta go. The bathroom's <laughs> in the head, oh god. <laughs> you can't just ran to some random guy who accidentally got in the shot. Get out of here, power loader. Fuck you. Oh my god! Wait, it's just Fuck this wall, the too. Why is it doing I hate this? this. I hate the people who made me. I hate the building that contains me. Fuck it. Wow. Is it, wearing, is it wearing shades? Yes, <laughs> it looks like it. If not, it's like the same aesthetic. It's There's like something meant to invoke it. <laughs> yeah, someone stole a Gundam. It's a real problem. You gotta have security on those things. The password can't be zero 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 zero. More flame dot mm -hmm. Look how majestic it is. <laughs> Who are you? Wait a minute! She was in an entirely different art style! Well, enough of that. Wait, no, no! Bring her back! What the hell? Yeah, it was so shaded. What? <laughs> CBS? Oh, CB3. <laughs> yeah, the, the art well, styles mesh, they mesh wonderfully. <laughs> There's some kind of ape robot. Necronomica. I... Look at all these people just living their everyday life, acting like they're not gonna get stepped on by a big-ass robot! Oh, fuck you, society. Damn. Danny, don't do that. We live in a society. <laughs> not anymore. I guess not. This robot's pissed. Yeah. Well, Why did that explode? All right. Congratulations, Danny. If that is you who who is the robot, you destroyed an entire city. Thank you. And now the tanks want to kill you. Tanks. Are you going to step on them? I mean, that'd be pretty cool. I'll think about it. Maybe I'll let my buddy do it. Multiple people in chat saying this is a reboot-ass game. <laughs> yeah, it does look like reboot. There's a reboot game for PS1. We got to play that someday. What? Really? Yeah. I'm so curious about what that's like. You think you play as Bob or Enzo? Or maybe Dot? I want to play as the dog. Oh yeah, the dog. Okay, we're being informed that game is absolutely awful and to not touch it. That's what I've heard. He's back! Yeah, get out of the way, tank. Check out the stop sign here. He will not stop. <laughs> you can't stop him. He's just gonna keep going until he kills everything. Not with flamethrowers, not with missile launchers, tanks. Damn. So do you play as a robot or is someone trying to stop the robot? You play as the robot. <sighs> Oh, so you're gonna be the anti-hero. Mm -hmm. Nice. Before oh, I love the little tanks. I'm sorry, they're really cute. Before the Joker, this was the original anti-hero. <laughs> hey, I just realized this intro has been going on. Yeah, I said it was a short film. I love student film. Film. Tell me this is even a quarter as impressive on PS1. You can't. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Look at all this graffiti someone drew. Just 
to be in the background of this intro. I was going to say they did an excellent job. That stuff looks yeah, good. Yeah, there's a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's me. I was say, shout out to the texture artists in this game. They give it a nice long pan, at least. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that their work is, is, at least you can see yep. it. Yep, continuing with the mural. There's some other stuff, a lady, a wolf, and oh, what do we have here? It's the title! Did the robot do that himself? Himself, I should say. Yeah, the, the robot's a very talented graffiti artist. They're really good. They they should probably do that instead of killing people. I think that could be a nice outlet for them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Iron Soldier 3. Now we skipped 2, so I won't know the, the story behind it all. But I can assume that the giant robots are still on a rampage. Check out the storyline, because I haven't had enough intro yet. Oh my god, Danny. Oh. I'll put up Big Hole by JPEG. Don't move along. <laughs> That's a threat. That is a threat and a promise. Now, they could have done this during the actual intro, but no. It's a different thing you got to pick from the menu. Believe it or not, this is also very long, so I'm going to go ahead and just skip it here. Thank you, Wes. <laughs> These games knew the art of the intro, though. Honey, chat's putting their children to sleep with this game. <laughs> Start a new game. Does it just replay the intro with text, Danny? Yes. No! <laughs> no! You... Mm. Oh, thank God. Let's play on easy. We'll do the one-player missions. There's a two-player mode. I don't even want to know what that's like. Hit and run. So you get to play this way it's meant to be played? Mm-hmm. Well, unfortunately, that you won't be able to get the full range unless you, you know the controller. Yeah. The, uh... <laughs> I'm glad there's a euphemism for it now. <laughs> I, uh... I, I, I want to know how it plays, actually. I'm, I'm curious. Collect the supply crates located in a warehouse complex in the city. Uh, wait, what? Okay. I was assuming you needed to, you know, step on people. Collect crates. Okay, okay. From a warehouse. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I've looked all over this level in practice. I could not find the warehouse. Everything looks like a fucking warehouse in this game. Wait, I can't wait. tell where to go. Wait, so you've done this and you couldn't find the first objective point? No, I couldn't. Dude, weirdly that's enough, an Alex move. What? Weirdly enough, this is very similar to Iron Soldier 1 on the Jaguar. I believe the first mission in that game also requires you to find a warehouse and open it up. So, if you're expecting more Iron Soldier, good news, this is exactly the same as Iron Soldier 1. Okay. You hold the accelerate, decelerate button, and you push up or down to accelerate or decelerate. And once you do that, you're on autopilot, leaving you to just shoot everything around you, or step on things. Whichever you are want to do. Uh, unfortunately, that issue I mentioned before with unwanted diagonals on the D-pad is especially bad in this game. But, luckily, this game lets you use the analog stick. And there you go. You can finally play the video game. I think this is the first time I've used the analog stick tonight and have it act had it actually work. So that's nice. I was going to say, it seems to be working pretty okay for you here. How does it feel? Uh, it feels like I'm controlling a giant robot. Let's punch this building to death. Good. There we go. Boom. Man, I gotta say, that was a poorly made building. No wonder the future sucks. <laughs> Exploded in the cubes. This game has special weather effects. Right now it's raining. Now they could have made the game better by having a windshield viper button. I think that would have been pretty amusing, but they missed out. Okay, uh, hint from Chad. Apparently all the buildings intentionally look alike, and it isn't just one random building. You just have to blow up as many buildings as you can. Look how around. many buildings there are, though! <laughs> How am I supposed to do that? I am but one giant robot. I'm not God. Oh my God! So it wasn't. <laughs> so it wasn't just me. Anyone Rambler says so. This is pretty much still battalion without a three hundred control dollar controller weight. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Point God. well taken. Uh, yeah, this game has an alternative for the original Xbox. Maybe look into that. I don't even know where the warehouse district is. It's they all They all look like district. warehouses. Do you see the problem? Yeah, I got ruined. I exploded. This, this robot, man. It's not a very durable robot, is the thing. Oh, is there a really self-indulgent game over sequence yes, too? Yes, I hope it's really depressing. Okay, we gotta watch this. Okay. Honestly, you're not missing much by not seeing more of the gameplay. It's Jaguar, Iron Soldier, except better frame rate and slightly more detail. Not a lot more detail, just enough. It's also more confusing, so if that appeals to you, this is the game to get. Well, I do love confusing messes of games. Damn. The robot barbecue. Don't eat that! I will not continue. Iron Soldier 3. Not, uh, this is about in the middle in terms of quality in the Nuance Library. Not the best and not the worst. Uh, rip you. What happens if I load a game? What if it tries to load from a non-existent memory card? Oh, I see. Ugh. Actually, hang on. Oh, are you gonna put in code? Yeah. Cool. Well... Uh. If the game lets me, I will. I have a code for the last level. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, uh, the controllers are way more than 20 to 30 dollars now, unfortunately. Yeah. The new one blew up. For some people. Oh, hey, come on. There we go. <laughs> Even the D pad sucks. <laughs> Every part of this sucks. Oh, but then you want to sell it? Can't believe it. Is this gaming? Oh, history? here we go. Wait, whoa. That's like. Is that its robo brain? That big glowing thing? Okay, that looks cool. It's got a crystal brain! Damn! Must be one of those Zistral crystals. <laughs> I want a crystal brain. Crystal brain, isn't that a character in Cobra? I was going to say, isn't crystal brain like a, a, develop, a Japanese developer for the NES or something? <laughs> oh, I heard they never released crystal brain in the States. Mmm. Shame. Indiana Jones and the Crystal Brain. <laughs> Let me ask you, how much... How much FMV is too much FMV? For me, too, mu too much FMV is when there's a lot of FMV and it's... somehow boring, and I gotta say, this is somehow boring to me. It's a little boring, it goes on a little bit too long. Oh, he sees the birds. I would love some hammy acting. I would love some just overwrought anything. Robots just dreaming of a summer vacation. Ugh, same, buddy. Come back, summer vacation. What are we doing? I don't know! We're staring <laughs> at the sunset, and it's meaningful. Okay. It's bird time. Did I beat the game? Did you? Did we just see the ending? Wait. Uh, oh, congratulations! Oh, cool. We did it! We beat Iron... We beat... I was gonna say Iron Angel 3. We beat <laughs> Iron Soldier 3. And oh I'm now God. ready to enter real combat with P Pinta. Oh, shit. I guess the final password just gives you the ending sequence. Thank you for the you did it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Herman Munster did it. Thank you, Herman. I have been awarded the title Robot Commander at easy difficulty. All right. Oh, I bet I can. All right, folks. If you know any Taito experts, Call them into the room because their assistance is needed. Tonight's final game is Space Invaders XL. Oh, nice.
this game was a surprise in many ways. No, I will not elaborate on that. Don't, don't. I assume the game will speak for itself once it gets started. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is model number 11109. Oh, wait. The last game was 11103. Uh, that tells me there's a whole lot of unreleased Nuon games out there. There was one called A Maze, which was basically rolling a ball around a maze, a la Labyrinth. I think that got, uh, that was never released, and I don't think a prototype has ever surfaced. Don't know about those other games. I think they planned a port of Riven, the sequel to Myst. That never happened. But far as I know, this was the last officially released Nuon game, at least here in North America. Mm. A surprising one, considering it's based on Space Invaders. It's officially developed in cooperation with Taito. Is it? And look wait, at that logo. Wait, 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 no. You cannot give me a, a, a title sequence like that and... It's Space Invaders XL. Extra big. The big boy invaders. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Let's do the space invaders. Now, there's a little bit more content in the game than this, but I'm just going to show off briefly what the main game modes are. Uh, essentially, it's a compilation of all the different versions of the original space invaders, including the original cocktail release, which is this. Mm, beautiful. Play space invaders. What was this, 77? I want to 78? say 76. One of them 70s years. Let me look that up. I'm actually curious. How blown away do you think people in the 70s were by this game? Considering all I had was, like, the, the crap. Like, yeah, like, they were playing with sticks and dirt, and then all of a sudden Space Invaders comes around. Hold on. So, sorry to anyone who remembers the 70s. I know you weren't just playing with sticks and dirt. Pretty good port, other than the upscaling and the filtering. Filtering honestly looks real bad, and I wish they didn't do it. Can I get the? Yeah, I got that UFO. Okay, Space Invaders was '78. Okay. Yeah, this is really impressive for '78. Mm-hmm. I'd have been impressed. It also has a lot of character to it, but. Yeah, I love those little aliens. Those weird little squiddy fishy things. They're a little. I'm sorry, I have to call them little freaks. That's not very nice. <laughs> ah, I love those little freaks. Trying to invade our space. I love the music. I love the way it gets faster. I love the tension that's being built in the game. Mm -hmm. And there you go, that's Space Invaders. That's essentially what Space Invaders is. But then... They added an overlay. They put cellophane on the screen to create mm. the illusion of color. What pride flag is that? Uh, I believe that is the gender fluid pl flag. We need, no, no, we need a nicer flag. I don't know. I think this is better than the actual gender fluid flag. <laughs> That's fair. Not a fan. <laughs> Wow, we, we have a... You, you're demanding a redesign. Uh, it's not too late. Otherwise, exactly oh. exactly identical. All they did was add literal cellophane to the screen to create the illusion of color. That is it. You know what, Danny? I'm with you, actually. Yeah, see? You agree? It's not great. I don't like those colors. I actually don't really like that very much either. Later, they iterated on the idea of adding color, and instead they added a static background image to what is essentially just the black and white game, only it has this. That looks good, right? That does look good. Functionally, though, it's the exact same game. It's still Space Invaders. It's still good. And it's still fantastic if you're in the 70s. And then finally, after many years, they went and did it. They added color to Space Invaders. Holy shit. There's an honest-to-God, full-color Space Invaders. Yeah! There's a... 
<laughs> yeah, it's amazing. You could fit all these really graphically impressive games on a 750 megabyte disc. Well, this is actually a DVD. Okay. Wait a minute. DVDs have even more space, so... What is hiding on this bad boy? Well, I'm glad you asked, Alex. Because in addition to these modes, it has a series of time attack and battle modes. We'll get to the battle mode in a second, because like I mentioned at the top of the, the stream, this is one of the games that where um, the remote control is player one and you need to plug the controller into port two. And I am not hot swapping the controller during gameplay. Absolutely you can't make not. me. So watch the volume on this, Alex, but we're going to start up time attack mode. Time attack. Taito fans, what game is this from? I have heard this before. Wait, yeah, what is this? This is like from fucking Plump Pop or Poochie Carrot or something. So the graphics here are nicer. I think this is an exclusive gameplay mode. I don't think this is in any other, other Space Invaders compilation. If I'm wrong, let me know. It's not Poochie Carrot. Okay. okay. It sounds like one of those cutesy games, like Fairyland Story or something. Yeah. All right, turn it up a little bit. Chat, if you know, first person to know, uh, get sent bighole.jpg. <laughs> Alex. I'm sorry. Don't know. Almost there. Two to go. Oh, come on. There we go. Well, there's actually multiple tracks in this. That was from something called Doppel or Doppler or something. Here's another track. The tracks are actually misnamed. Uh, the actual track names are... Once you switch to the next track, you'll find out the name of the previous track. That's so weird. Yeah. I don't know if it's a fuck up with the ISO or what. But this is what also... Is this? this? is also from a classic Taito game, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Too bad Tepid Snake is probably asleep right now. Nah, I was gonna they say, I know. think... Wait, what?! <laughs> this hey, music what kicks happened ass. to the music for a hot second?! It rules. No, it got sick! Is it Bubble Symphony? Space Panthers 95? I don't know. Could be. Oh, nuts. Darius? <laughs> okay, we have a lot of... Shit. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay. So the next track, I'm pretty sure some people will probably know. Oh yeah. Who's got it? Uh... Yep, Captain Neo from Darius, one of the most famous Taito tracks in all existence, is in this trashy-ass Nuon compilation of Space Invaders games. This is a great song. Sorry, I'm just vibing. Yeah, this is unexpectedly a really good Zuntata soundtrack, because it has a, stuff from a bunch of games. It's one of the best, though. Damn, sorry, this is just great. Yeah, you gotta listen to the Darius soundtrack sometime. I do. Also, Raystorm gets you some of that. Yes. So you may be wondering, what other tracks are in this? Well... Okay. Who wants to identify this one? Whatever it is, it's the title of the next track. I just think this is a nice bonus to throw in for all the Taito heads out there. It is nice, There's yeah. a few of them out there now. It's, it's, a, grow it's a growing <laughs> sector. Ever since the Angry Video Game Nerd put out his Taito episode, the Taito ranks are growing. Uh, BBH says the Devil Ray just shouted Civilian. Yep, she was right. That was Civilian. How about this one? This is the console is sick. What if, what if you're sick? You ever think about that? Minus 10 points, what? <laughs> oh, that was minus 10 seconds. Wait, that's even weirder. 
Well, that particular track was from Master of Weapon. Good luck. And this track, I know y'all know. Anyone who watches BBH's stream for any length of time knows this track for damn sure. Is this from Ray Mace? <laughs> no, good guess though. I only know because. I... Nope, they got yeah, Urban Urban Trail from Night Striker is in this game of all games. Isn't that awesome? So as a compilation, this is kind of lacking. As a Taito soundtrack, though, this is good. This is real good stuff. I know y'all know this one too. You'll know the narration at least. What is this in here? What is this doing here? I don't know why they did it, but I'm glad they did. Me too, but yeah, I. Same. Hey, let's go get some tuna sashimi. You know what? I did. Oh no, it wasn't tuna. I had salmon sashimi the other night. Oh, I see. Remember when we all had? Oh, that sushi night was great. What else is in here? Some of these tracks I couldn't identify until it was spoiled for me. There's, there's, there's one track that I don't know if it's in here, so I don't want to spoil. But there's one track that Chat is craving, and I don't know if it's in here or not. I don't know if it is either. What is it? It's Daddy Mulk. That's what chat wants. That's I'm so chat sorry plays. to say that Daddy Mulk is not included in this collection. Well, you need to sell the new one. <laughs> <laughs> this track was from Gun Frontier. That's right, Gun Frontier. Chat's very sad that... Uh, it's unfortunate, yeah. The Daddy Mulk isn't in this. How about this one? Yeah. Kind of a Space Invaders slow jam. Metal black, metal black, metal black. You got metal it. Black. Yep, this is 100 percent metal black for sure. An angry video game nerd's most hated game, metal black. <laughs> it will never cease to amuse me for the rest of my years that he reviewed every game in Title Legends 2. <laughs> Seemingly in a concentrated effort to piss off all arcade fans across the world. Honestly, I respect it. Yeah. Got it. Just a couple more tracks here. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm jamming. Galactic Storm, huh? I think it was. Yeah. Well, that's what Devil Ray said, and you know. Yeah, that you got it. I like how they truncate the names to make it even more of a mystery. How about this one? This is a song just called Good Song that Alex likes to listen to. <laughs> Good Song.mp3. Yeah. We saw Flame.gif, Good Song.mp3, Big Hole.jpg. It's been a good night for file names. This track was from Grid Seeker. Oh. I know this one, but do you? Alex is currently raving. I am. This is this is what I put on when I uh, when I ascend in Cookie Clickers. This is from Galactic Attack, ah, okay. aka Layer Section, aka Gunlock, aka any of the other five names they gave this game. One of my personal favorites. I'm real glad it's in here. Yeah, I played a lot of Galactic Attack on Saturn. Probably won't listen to this one too long. It may get us DMC8. Well, I like this one. It's a good one, though. What's this from? Oh, wait, chat. What is this from? Visioners? Uh-huh. That is, is uh, Darius Gaiden, I think. Oh, okay. So I just, I see the spelling of Visioners from chat, and I'm like, are you okay? But no, that's how you spell it. <laughs> no, I believe it. I believe it. I don't even it. have to look. I, I'm, I'm not dissing chat anymore. I'm just, I'm astonished. Is this the one with the vocals? Let's listen to it for a second. I'm actually I'm sad. actually having fun with a new on game. Let me enjoy myself. I was going to say we're running a little over, but you're enjoying yourself and that's all that matters. Oh, I like 
Close your eyes, close your head. I thought they were saying Rockstar Eyes, Rockstar Head, and I was very confused. That works. I got this one. Such a good soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> and yet this game is so rare. Tayo put all the music they had into it, except for Daddy Mulk. That is such a shame. Which one was this? It was Geki Rindan. Yes. I love this. What is this? Chat. I actually don't know what that was. Uh, Chat doesn't know. Psychic Force? Oh, maybe. That would make sense. Oh, jeez, we are running over. Tell you what, the last thing I'll do is we'll play two-player Space Invaders, because where else are you going to see that? What a good game, right? Yeah, like... Hold on, let me just put up a interstitial, okay? There you go. Okay. Oh, yeah, I gotta do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold so on. So there's a couple other games we're not going to be able to feature tonight, because uh, in one case... Like I mentioned at the top of the stream, the next Tetris is only available via a demo disc for Toshiba Nuon players. And as you saw at the top of the stream, this player freaks the fuck out when it tries to play it. We were lucky we got to see that intro, at least. Should I show chat how much it sells for? Yes. Yeah, to get an original copy of that, which isn't even going to work on this Nuon, that's how much it costs. I love I love the money emoji in the uh, in yeah. the title. What, what what kind of balls does it take to put a money emoji in the title of your eBay listing? <laughs> like, hey, you sentient sacks of cash, fucking buy this. <laughs> <laughs> Chat spamming it. Thank you. All right, this is it. We're gonna end the stream how we began it. I'm going to play using the terrible DVD remote, and Alex is gonna play using the controller in battle mode. Luckily enough, I am uh, bad at games, so Danny actually has a chance. Okay. And this also uses the uh, music that's on the disc. Okay, there we go. So in theory, you could play the uh, next Tetris if you had the correct unit. Uh, the demo disc itself is available on Internet Archive. If you can get that to work, more power to you. Fuck, I'm bad. One. You did because I just straight up died. Kaboom. I win. Well, the Earth died. Sorry, folks. And in addition to that, there's one final game for the Nuon, which is the most mysterious one of all. In fact, it's, cl it's classified as Lost Media, according to the Lost Media Wiki. It's called Crayon Shinchan 3, and you want to talk about Obscure. This was only released in Korea. It's only compatible with Korean Nuon players, and to date, only one copy is known to exist. Uh, this person was requested to rip the game and put it on the internet, a request that they declined, so it is not available for anyone. <laughs> if you want to see gameplay of it, uh, there's a gameplay video linked on the Lost Media Wiki from the owner. He claims it's a long play, but it's only six minutes of gameplay before he gives up, and it's handy cam, so the, the video is all shaky and shitty. It's not even using direct capture. Yeah, uh, it's... it's bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah. I thought about showing it, but whatever. You can look that up if you want. Mm -hmm. Hopefully someday someone will find a copy of Crayon Shinchan 3 and rip it. Maybe the region code can be modified so it can be played on other nuons. I don't know. But I'm just hoping someone else finds a copy at some point. Someone who is more uh, amenable to the idea of game preservation. But at least we have this, right? Oh god. Oh god, this isn't- yeah, I died. Alex figured out what he was doing real quick. Hey, what did I do? How did I do that? <laughs> you just ruined me. And that's the new one. The complete library, or at least the games that are playable or available on the internet somewhere. What do we think about this? I 
don't know. Well, first of all, I do want to show off what the Crayon Chin Chan uh, box looks like. Yeah, does. okay. Chad, Chad was kind of interested in that. Yeah, this is what it looks like. If, if you, you see, see this, this, if you see this at a Goodwill or somewhere, buy that and put it on the internet, please. I we beg will, of you. we will, we will, we will shout you out in chat. We will dedicate a stream. If you, if you dump this. I, I, I will, I you'll will be do my something hero. nice for you. I don't know if you'll be the world's hero, but you'll be a hero to me. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye out, folks. It could be in a goodwill near you once they open back up. Hey, Danny, uh, how much did the new one cost at launch? Do you know? Uh, two, three hundred, I think. I think it wasn't much more expensive than a standard DVD player. Yeah, that's about right for a DVD player at the time. And nowadays, as I mentioned before, they're still very cheap. The systems themselves are about 50 bucks, but... Shipping is very expensive, so that'll mm -hmm. run you another 20 probably. But check your uh, thrift store when it's safe and when you're vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Check your thrift store. Uh, check the DVD players. And if you see any of them with a little nuance on it or in some way, eh, you, gotta, you gotta get yourself a nuance player. Yeah. The good news is the games are burnable. And for now, they're all available via archive.org. Uh, that may change in the case of Iron Soldier 3 because that's been relicensed and they're making a new print run for God knows whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're currently taking signups wherever that is. If they get 100 signups, they're going to reprint the game. They got 100 signups, chat said earlier, by the way. Oh, did they? <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to pay full price for Iron Soldier 3, you'll soon have a chance to pay forty nine ninety nine for it. And I, yeah. I want to see a reprint of Space Invaders. That's that's my favorite game. And yeah, we didn't go over it, but there is, there is homebrew for the new one as well, so there's a lot on it. There's well, not a lot. But. There's like a dozen homebrew applications. They're all pretty simple. We showed off some of them during our previous stream, but I don't think it's worth re-exploring it. Nah, nah. Did you put up bighole.jpg again? Mm. That's been the new on, everyone. Thanks for watching. We're done. No. I was normal. It's fine. It's normal. <laughs> totally normal. What a system. What a system. Well, I had fun. Or at least I had fun listening to the great soundtracks of Taito's past. Some weird space invaders. Got to play as a giant robot. A skydiving cop. A bunch of animals racing around in go-karts. Mm -hmm. It had the full experience. And now we never have to experience it ever again. Goodbye, Nuon. Goodbye, Nuon. <laughs> special, special thanks to our raccoon friend, as well as all our patrons. Yes, thank you, patrons. It's because of your continued support that I was able to drop so much money on this new on controller, which I'm now going to recoup almost instantly. Yes, thank you. But it's because of that that I was able to act on it to begin with. Otherwise, we wouldn't have seen this stream at all. So thank you. Seriously. S thank you so much. <clears throat> our patrons have actually already voted for what next week's game is going to be. Are you ready for this? What is it? The theme for next Wednesday was Impossible Games. I decided to take the vote early so I could have more time to practice. Your choices were Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Tower of Druaga, Comic Zone, or one other game, doesn't matter, because the winner was Tower of Druaga. Oh, boy. <laughs> next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central, tune in to see me attempt a complete playthrough of the famously impossible video game, The Tower of Druaga, a Namco classic. A game that no one has ever figured out well, they did. It just took them many years. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, people, it, it was weird looking at the patron-only Discord because everyone was all like, "I didn't vote for Draga." Yeah, no one wanted to. No one wanted <laughs> to say they did like, it. No, I voted for Ninja Turtles. I don't know why anyone would vote for Draga. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's funny. Like, I mean, if I really didn't want to play it, I wouldn't have put it up for an option. But that's what we're doing. Possibly the hardest option possible. It's a. Uh, it's gonna be a thing. Please oh. tune in next Wednesday to see it. Oh, BBH, don't worry. We People will talk shit on our YouTube uploads no matter what we do. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's inevitable. No that's matter just, what. we could say Tra Tower Draga is the good game, and someone will be in there being like, good no, but not isn't. great. What's your problem? <laughs> you We're call also, yourself gamers. Also, quick announcement. We're taking Friday off because it's a day known as Christmas Day. Let's give ourselves Christmas off. What do you say? I was going to I was going to make two gags. One I was going to do an, uh, a a Scrooge related one, and the second one was going to pretend I don't know what Christmas is. I don't know which one is funnier. I'm going with Scrooge. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. I'm ever so happy to have Christmas Day off. But thank you. All right, we'll be back on Monday. I think Alex has something cooked up for Multimedia Monday. We'll uh -huh. announce we'll announce more stuff uh, as we get closer to that, but. I'm personally looking forward to that. Yeah, Monday is going to be, uh, I hope you like the Star Wars prequels. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Alex, why don't you wrap us up as you demonically laugh? <laughs> and I'm going to look for a raid target. 
<laughs> All right, we're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash uh, uh, Retro Pals. We post uh, full-length highlights of our streams there. Our latest one was a look at our, was a, our Flash game stream. Check that one out. That one is so good, and I'm not just saying that. That is genuinely one of my favorite streams we've ever done. You check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it, check out. it out. Check it out. <laughs> We're also, uh, Chad mentioned that there's more big hole content on the Discord, so let me just oh my pop in a link God. to the what Discord. Have you, what have you done? It's normal. Uh, we are on Discord. Do check it out there. Again, friendly chat, retro game discussion, and cat picks. Cat picks is a big part of it. Uh, if you do join, please try to donate a cat pick in the, uh, pet appreciation uh, yeah, it's, area. it's customary. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be a cat. It could be another animal. We have raccoons there. I've seen a lot of armadillos. Uh, horses, very common as well. Lizards. All animals, great and small. I saw that horse being tucked into bed. It was very cute. Ah, God, that was good. Mm. (laughs) It Mm. makes you mad. So fucking good. Wow. (laughs) Alex is mad and happy and punchy, all the emotions all at once. Well, it's it's almost... It's been an emotional day. We played so many Nuon games. Mm -hmm. Can't help but feel it. I got the Christmas spirit, and hopefully you do too. I do too. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Who the fuck am I hosting? Who am I going to... I got a raid now, because hosting apparently doesn't work anymore. It Boom. just It just bounces right off people. Bull! We're going to do a raid on Thanks. Duke Donuts, who is finishing up his Gamekeeper project. Uh, once again, that is a little promotional booklet Nintendo Power sent out to subscribers at one point. Just uh, given like a little checklist of things to do in some of the most popular games of the era. He's filled out the whole damn thing in the final game which I'm pretty sure he's playing blind, is Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. So this should be a hell of a journey for him. So enjoy that. Have a good rest of your evening. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. See ya, folks.